I'm about to take you to a place with an interesting story. A story that left a legacy in their food. And now, the town is recognized all around Mexico because of this. This history doesn't come from our indigenous pre-Hispanic cultures, or from the Spaniards conquerors, but from the British immigration. But how did the British people come and settle down in the innermost central Mexico? And what's that food that the local people embraced and now they are very proud of? Stick around and I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed it. Hi guys! I am in Mineral del Monte, or better known as Real del Monte. This is a lovely town that is located in the state of Hidalgo, in central Mexico. This small town is very proud because it has its unique history and culture. And I want to show you that in this video. This town is considered a Pueblo Magico, or a magic town in Mexico. This is a name that the government of Mexico gave to small towns that preserved their history, their culture, their traditions, and its architecture. And this town has that. And as you can see, I'm carrying a lot of things because I even have my big jacket because this town is very cold as well. It's located in the mountains. Let me take all my things to the hotel. Hopefully I can check in right now. And then I can show you around. I contacted a lady that's been making this town's traditional food for over 40 years. And she's very proud to say that this food has been the legacy of this small town. The pasty. And I know what you might be thinking. An empanada? There are empanadas everywhere. But people here wouldn't call them empanadas. Esto es una obra de arte. They call them pastes. Pastes because of its origin in the UK. The Cornish pasties, not pastries. The Cornish pasties were originated in Cornwall, one of the 47 counties in England. One of Britain's traditional delicacies that are always recommended to foreigners when they come to the UK are Cornish pasties. Let's see if we can find one. Okay. Okay, thank you. This is a traditional Cornish pasty, and the first time that I got to the UK, the people told me, you've got to try this. But what they didn't know is that it's not so exotic for me. But what's exactly a pasty? A pasty is a short cross pastry filled with beef and vegetables. The edges are sealed by crimping them. Miss Rosa was inherited the tradition of how to bake the Cornish pasty, and now she has three small restaurants selling in this municipality. Uh, Señora Rosa is making the traditional one. It's papa con carne or potato with meat, and she's putting a lot of meat. Tuvimos la oportunidad de llegar al lugar donde donde salieron los pastes hacia Real del Monte, hacia México. Y tuvimos también el, el gusto, el privilegio, como lo queramos llamar, de poder hacer pastes allá de Corwell y de hacer un paste al estilo de nosotros, que pudimos ponerle unos chilitos verdes claro. para darle otro sabor. El visitar un país de donde llegó lo que ahora es nuestro sustento económico, pues es... Fantastic. I want to tell you that this video is sponsored by me. I have created three specialized courses focused on Spanish conversation using Mexican phrases and vocabulary. On my courses, you'll have classes with me, so you start talking in Spanish right away. The idea is to give you the tools you need to order in Mexico, to live in Mexico, and, and more. If you are interested in booking a course, I'm going to leave my link here 
and I'm going to put more information in the description below. But how did the pasties end up being the most popular dish here in a small town in central Mexico? Money, resources exploitation, you guessed right. This town was once one of the biggest mining towns in Mexico, or at that time, the New Spain. This guy was from Spain. He was the man who was in charge of all the mining business in Mineral del Monte. The Spaniards started mining in the 16th century when they discovered that their, this area was full of gold and silver. We are about to go down a tunnel. They used the Native Americans as slaves to work in the mines. The Spanish were in control of the mines until the 19th century when at that time, they had already extracted all the minerals that weren't so deep. The excavations weren't deeper because, as I said, there wasn't any machinery to go deeper. So the Spanish people sold all the mines to the British people. To be able to get those minerals that were in the deepest parts of the mountains, they needed machinery and specialized workforce. People from Cornwall in England at that time had the best and advanced equipment. So a bunch of British people came here to this town and they brought their family and their food too. It was exactly the equipment it was needed in this town to drain mine tunnels flooded by groundwater. Imagine all these steam machinery were brought in the 19th century by donkeys. I'm not even kidding, that's a true fact. A lot of donkeys died when they were trying to transport all this machinery from Veracruz to Mineral del Monte. For their surprise, they didn't find enough minerals, so they couldn't cover all their investment. When the British miners would go work in the mines, they would always take with them a simple but practical food, a pasty. The pasty of the papa is the de origin English. It's the one that comes with the English mineros. Ingleses. As Mr. Rosa said, pasty was the food of the British miners. It was a food that was easy to carry, it was full of calories, it was easy to grab, it was perfect for the miners. Tiene una trencita porque nos platican. Entonces como abajo no podían lavarse las manos, la trenza es precisamente para eso, para agarrar el paste de aquí, comerse todo el contenido y la trenza que era lo que contaminaba, desecharla. La trenza era más gruesa, más burda, porque había que agarrarlo de ahí, había que sostenerlo. Sí. Ahora se hace la trenza más delgadita porque se dora y sabe riquísima. Sí, Entonces, es lo más bueno. I'm super hungry. I just want to try the pasties, but I have to see the procedure first. Look at how tasty they look. I'm excited. Here. You come to this place, you can have your pasty or your pa pasta in Spanish, a café de olla, and it's all you need. Her father-in-law taught her how to bake pasties in the British traditional way. Él quedó huérfano muy pequeño. A los nueve años ya era huérfano. Su mamá lo metió de mocito a la casa de unos ingenieros ingleses. Cuando mi suegro era pequeño, la minería aquí estaba en su apogeo y aunque ya no estaba en manos de los ingleses, había, se quedaron aquí muchos de ascendencia inglesa. O empezó a fijarse cómo las señoras elaboraban las, los pastes. And of course, we have our chiles here because this is the traditional way. This is the way of how we eat them in Mexico. Look at this. Mm -hmm. I can see the potato and they put the, pot the raw potato in the pasty. In chili. Mm -hmm. The dough is so thin, but it's very crunchy. It has a really nice texture. The chili gives the perfect combination 
Can you see this crunchy part? In the past, the miners used to, to hold the pasty with this uh, thick part. In Spanish, it's called trenza. In English, I don't know. How do you call this, guys? Mineral del Monte is so, so famous for its pasties. And there's this sisterhood with the UK that even Prince Charles with his wife came here to this town in central Mexico. When you walk through the streets of Mineral del Monte or Real del Monte, you'll see a lot of pasty shops or a lot of pasty restaurants because they are very proud of their food, of course. So it's going to be very hard to try to decide for the best ones. If you want to eat in the same place where I ate, it's here, Pastes Marques. Cuando se inicia Pastes Márquez en el 80, la gente misma empieza a pedir y de ahí viene el mestizaje que le llamamos nosotros y el primero en salir es el de frijol. Here comes the Mexican one. Señora Rosa is making beans, pasty. The beans ones is one of the most popular. Señora Rosa is, is telling me. El de frijolito lleva su trenza en medio para diferenciar. Oh, sí, qué bonito. There's even mole with chicken. I want to try that one as well. And I know that one is one of the favorites of Mexicans. What I like about this town is that there are a lot of restaurants, cafes, bars, There's a, there are bars with craft beer, winery, restaurants, fancy restaurants, so I'm very excited. My husband is coming too. We're going to spend the whole weekend here. I'm waiting for him to have our dinner, but I'm craving for a churro. So let's get a churro. I just want to say thank you very much to all my patrons who are supporting my channel. We are more. Every video, we are more. I'm super, super thankful, guys. Look at the fog. It's, it's too much. The shop that's behind me, that is called Don Nico, you have to come here. And he's actually going to give you one of the typical dishes here in Mineral del Monte. It's esquites with pulque. Oh. Mm. And I've said in another video what esquites is. It's a mixture of corn, like in a broth with chilies. The flavor is so great, but he's also adding pulque. Y ellos llevaban elotes, y ahí los picábamos, y así como ahorita aquí, su mantequilla, su mayonesa, su chile, y puro pulque. We tried, and it's really, really great. He also has pulque with this strange combination, it's pulque with red soda. Ok, te voy a traer del pulque del bueno, pero del bueno, si me aguantas tres jarritos. Or jarritos. A very, a very typical brand of a Mexican soda. I've seen it before, obviously, because I'm from Hidalgo, but I hadn't tried it. Today was my first time and it was great. So remember to come here. Margarito. <laughs> All the mining activities ended in 2005. Now there are no mines, I mean, no active mines, but there's a lot of history and a couple of museums where you can know all the history about this place.
It may sound strange for you, maybe, that people from a specific city in the UK came here with their families, and this town adopted their food, their history, their architecture as well. And because of this, this town became a Pueblo Magico, or a magic town. And this has been happening along Mexico's history. Mexico is very rich in nature resources, but technology and industry have overtaken ours, and that had brought a lot of foreign investment along with Mexico's history. As a consequence, we can see now how different cultures have settled down in different parts of Mexico nowadays. For example, People from Japan and Korea are coming to Querétaro, the city where I'm living. They're bringing a lot of industry and they're bringing their family. So we are having a blend of culture over there. We have other examples. Chinese people were to Mexicali, Korean people in Monterrey because of their car industry. In Guanajuato, it's happening the same. A lot of Japanese people are coming because of the industry. And there are many examples in Mexico, current examples and examples of history. I actually made a video of San Miguel de Allende, a city where a lot of foreigners are going, a lot of retirees are going to live there. If you want to watch that video, I'm going to leave the link here. If you have another example, if you want me to make another video about how a country settled down in a specific city, in a specific town in Mexico, let me know in the comments. I love making those videos because I find them very interesting, the culture, the history, and even the architecture.